Knowledge for Men, episode 81. Welcome to knowledgeformen.com, where you're going to grow into the man you want to be. Your life will never be the same again. I can guarantee it. Hey guys, one of the questions I've been getting a lot lately is, can you put together a list of the best books and success quotes from all of your guests and combine that into one guide? And so I've actually just done that. It's called the top 30 books and success quotes every man must live by. So out of all of the podcast episodes I've done, over 60, I finally put together this guide and you can download it for free at kfmfree.com. Again, that's kfmfree.com. All right, guys, welcome to the show. I'm here with Grant Cardone. He's an international sales and training expert, New York Times bestselling author, whose books and programs have impacted hundreds of thousands of people and organizations worldwide. Millions. Millions, okay. He appears regularly on Fox TV. He's been on CNN, CNBC, Bloomberg, The Huffington Post, Wall Street Journal, and stars in a reality TV show called The Turnaround King, where he turns struggling businesses around. All right, Grant. Yeah. He's showing me a bathroom sign here. We got for men. This is weird. For men, you know what that means? Show me the way, Grant. No, know when to take a leak. Know when to take a shit. And know when to get back on the phone. <laughs> okay. All right. So as you can see, we're in it for today's episode. So Grant, uh, happy to have you on the show here. Hey, happy to happy to be here on. I know that you've interviewed you know some some serious you know guys. And I asked you, I, you, you didn't answer my question. What's the worst interview you've ever done? Oh, that's going to be a tough one, Grant. I don't, I don't. I need a name, dude. I need a name. I need a name. The audience wants to know. Everybody wants to know right now. And I'm going to tie it into why I asked you that question. What's the worst interview that you've ever done? Somebody that you expected to deliver big time and didn't. Gary V, man. Gary Vaynerchuk. Supposed to uh, be on the show a few times and uh, stood me up. So still trying to get him on, but you know he stood me up a few times and I got a secret grudge against him right now. But definitely still respect the guy. Okay. All right. Now, the reason I asked you that is for the last 30 seconds, I had everybody's attention. And if you can't get that, all the knowledge in the universe will not help you have success. There you are. Show's over. <laughs> Show's over. Wrap it up, guys. Okay. Here go. Okay. Here, I'm going to the restroom. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, Grant, we start off each show with a favorite success quote from the guest, something that you've lived by. You want me to give you one of mine or somebody else's? It's just got to be something you've lived by. So. Okay. Yeah, this is mine. This is mine. You ready? I'm getting my pen out, Grant. Hold on here. Get your pens ready. Get your iPad ready. Okay. Success is your duty, obligation, and responsibility. Uh, break it down for us. Success is my duty, my obligation, and my responsibility. It's not something to wish for. It's not something to pray for. It's not something to ask about. It's not. It, it, it's a duty. Once you understand this is a duty, that without it you will die, when it becomes your obligation, you won't have to get up and be motivated. When it becomes your senior responsibility to provide an example of success for your friends, your community, your church, for your kids, for your spouse, for your wife. When you walk in at night, you're like, hey, she looks at you with that like, oh my God, that's, that's Iron Man right there, okay? <laughs> when, when she, you know, that's what you're working for. That's what you want. You don't want to just be better off than the neighbor. You don't want to compare yourself to other people. You don't want to be in the middle class. You want to have success that you dreamed of when there weren't any limitations, and so I say that success is not an option or a wish, but something that should be your duty, your obligation, and your responsibility. Something that you got yet you literally hang your life on. So success is within you. It's it's a core part of who you are, just like sleeping and eating, you're saying. Yeah, exactly. It, that, that's a perfect, perfect. It's like uh, oxygen. It's like it's that important. And, and most people do not treat it like it's that important. Most people are crossing their fingers, hoping, wishing, think the universe cares whether you're a success or a failure. The universe don't care. God don't care. Muhammad don't care. The higher power don't care. Uh, the devil doesn't care. Nobody cares except you. I mean, it's a really selfish, greedy a uh, self-centered kind of driven thing that you have to keep pouring fuel on like an engine uh, to say, hey, I'm going to go out and get get success or whatever that means to the individual. It doesn't have to mean money. Yeah, you have something in the 10X rule where you say, if you stop trying to succeed, it's like trying to live your life on one last breath of air. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, success is, for me, success is something that hasn't happened yet. 
You know, I, I hear a lot of people talk about they won this medal or this award or they're, they're the number one company in their in their space. Or I'm like, yo, well, that you already did that. Why, why are we talking about that? OK, no, no, nobody, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I clown Mount Everest. OK, I mean, I didn't. But, you know, well, so what? I mean, that that's what you did. That's not what you're going to do. Success is something you haven't done yet. History is something I've done. I've already had done that. That's not what drives people. That's not why Steve Jobs worked to the last, till he couldn't work anymore. It's like he wanted to leave a legacy until he couldn't create any more success. You know, Walt Disney. I mean, Walt Disney has been dead, I don't know, 50 years or something. He's still creating success in and in influencing the way people think in the mornings at night when they go to the park. I mean, you, can, you can say the parks are dirty, but the reality is he gives, he impresses lots of kids you know, with the images and with his legacy. All right. Wow. I'm really excited for the way the show's already going. Uh, this can be a great episode. I can already tell. So Grant, let's learn more about who you are and how you came to be and kind of like your background and upbringing. So Grant, go ahead and share with the audience your story and how you got started with what you do. Oh, I've always been successful. I was born rich. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you just born with money right out of your parents. No, I was actually born a grown man. I was born a grown man. I already had full knowledge. Uh, came out of my mother. I was this tall. I had that good head of hair right from the get go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you were given a speech on your way out. <laughs> I, I was born with a pen in my hand, and I knew uh, hundreds of closes and techniques and strategies. I actually knew about social media thought, 50, 60 years ago, 55 years ago or something. You know? Yeah. Uh, no, look, yeah. I grew up, my, my dad died when I was 10 years old and that, that really influenced my life. He was a hard worker. He never talked about hard work. He never said he had, you had to work hard, but he set an example. By the time I was 10, he died and left my mom to raise me. Uh, I grew up in Louisiana and we had, you know, this much money. We had a little bit of money. We're probably, you know, middle class, middle, middle class, lower middle class, somewhere in there. And, you know, everything was about fear and scarcity, not having enough because we didn't, we didn't have enough. We didn't know, you know, you don't have enough. You don't have enough when you don't know if whatever you have is going to last long enough. That, that's the real definition of not having enough. It is whatever your perception is. I know people with millions of dollars that don't have enough because they don't know and you might not know, is it going to last? The U.S. government doesn't have enough. It's broke. They just won't make it official. And if they're broke and you live in this country, then you don't know how that's going to affect you in the later years of your life. So that's my mom was operating under the scarcity constantly. Like, is, is this money going to last? Is this insurance money going to last? So I grew up in a very scarce environment where, you know, every meal came with a, uh, with a lecture, eat it all, turn off the lights and uh, grew up. I was 15 or 16 years old. And I remember telling my mother, I will never, I will never, ever grow up like this. And she's like, what are you talking about? Why aren't you grateful? And I'm like, when I grow up, I'm going to be rich. Dude, I want to be rich. I want to be so freaking rich. Okay. So rich that I don't have to worry about the lights. I don't have to worry about the running toilet. I don't have to cut my own freaking lawn. We don't have to wash the car. I don't clip coupons and I got enough money to help myself. Never worry and have enough money to help other people. You know, I wish I could tell you that I was rich the next day, but didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be a story here. Yeah, no, it was it was 15 more years and I was broke. But by the time I was 30, I was um, had somehow figured out how to make my first million dollars. And, and that really came from me learning, finally committing. I was 25, 25 years old. I was bro broke, literally dead broke, owed the government money. And I spent the next five years focused on learning everything I could about selling. Really, really mastered that space. I know I did. I, I mean, I understood it and then had some ideas about how I would flip literally change selling as we know it from what it's been for the last hundred years and um, went out and made a name for myself doing that, calling on companies door to door, making a big promise that I could increase their sales. And so why sales? I mean, there's so many different avenues that you could have taken, but what led you down the path of sales? Well, because I, because I couldn't, I couldn't get a job where I was, where I was. And the only, the only, when things are bad, you know, salespeople can always get a job. I mean, if you're ever down and out, and you actually do want a job, just go answer some sales ad. They'll hire you. Anybody will hire you. I mean, because every company wants revenue. Every company wants money. So they might not hire you for your knowledge or your experience, but they'll hire you if you walk in and say, I promise you I can sell you something today. Okay. Well, you don't even know about it. I promise you. 
Okay. I will either sell you something or I'll buy it myself. One of the two. I'm going to get you some revenue either way. <laughs> okay. I like that. I like the attitude. And so did you go to college? Was this a part of your background? Yeah, I went to college. I spent five years in college and, and uh, got out of college with an accounting degree. I got out very similar to what the times we're in right now where people can't get jobs. I got out of out of college, it was 24% unemployment that makes the, the six or seven or eight or whatever, the real number is probably 12 that, that we are at today. And it was 24%. Uh, this was 30 years ago. This was, yeah, when the numbers were real, when they t- told you it was, they, they actually reported real numbers and it was 24%. It was 24% unemployment and I couldn't get a job in accounting. Glad I couldn't actually looking back. <laughs> and uh, the only job I could get was in sales. And so I just started studying and reading and that's when I got introduced to all the thinkers, you know, the, 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 the Zig Ziglar stuff. And uh, I didn't even know that. I didn't know uh, any of that content was out there. It was the first time I was 23 years old and got introduced to books and, and inspirational stuff. And I mean, I would just start devouring stuff and it gave me a little bit of confidence and I devoured something else and it gave me more. And then I remember getting turned on the Betamax, these big Betamax VHS tapes and um, started watching videos of people speaking and I was enamored with them and they, I, they, they were human beings, I could tell, but at least they had ideas that were positive. I, I don't even know if it was real or true, but it was better than the stuff that I was hearing from my buddies. So you weren't in the best environment and these programs and books kind of opened you up to a new way of thinking. I don't, I don't think anybody's ever in the best environment. Okay. I mean, even if you're born, if, even if you're in a good family, let's say you're a good educated family. Well, so what? I mean, the environment's changing so fast now, it's almost impossible to be in a good one. You know, to, particularly today, if we, you know, get to current times, 800 TV channels, it's all garbage. Yeah. You know I mean, it's just, you got USA Today, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg. I mean, all the media, the CNN, the CNBC, the MSNBC. I, I mean, it's just a freaking puke, just dumping garbage every day. The car wreck, the murder. Turn on the TV, man. All you got to do is turn on the TV for a second. You're going to see somebody ripping somebody off. It, so it's constant, like something negative, right, coming at you. And it's like, and your friends are being influenced by that. You know, so so guys like you that are doing a podcast like this, I really, really just want to acknowledge the time that that you take, you know, providing people with a little bit of like focus. It doesn't have to be all serious, but at least give me some knowledge, man, that helps me walk out and say, OK, I'm a focus today on creating something positive. Yeah. I mean, it's really about just plugging in for 30, 45 minutes and, you know, getting some actionable advice, inspirational advice that's going to help you cross the day. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a little tip or strategy every day that can at least keep me in the game a little longer. You know, most people just quit just before, just before something was going to break. I know in my own life, I've seen the tendency for me to quit and all throughout all my businesses, like right before I'm about to score, man, the tendency, I don't know if it's some kind of a mental disorder or something, but like literally right before I was going to get my deal, the TV show, the radio show, the, the, the real estate that I wanted to own, the house, the perfect house on the ocean in La Jolla. In almost every case, I was about to quit right before that happened. And I just got a little nudge from somebody or something, a podcast, a CD, a program, a book, and said, let me try one more time. And boom, I got my break. Yeah, a lot of people quit three feet from gold. It's very true. Yeah, I love that. Right. And this is great transition. You have the book, The 10X Rule, the only difference between success and failure. So what is the 10X Rule and how can people apply this today to start seeing massive results in their life? The 10X Rule suggests that you simply, it's a simple book. I'm a simple person. Okay. If it's not simple, if you can't explain it to me in one line, then it's not a good thing for me to invest in. But, and that could be an idea or a stock. It doesn't matter. The 10X Rule basically suggests this 10 times the actions, 10 times the goals, and you'll get everything you ever dreamed of. And that's the only way. If you're doing the one times things, one times one is one. 10 times one is 10, okay? I don't need more talent. I don't need a better education. I don't need to be tall. I need 10 times. 10 times whatever you think you need. So if, if, if for instance, I'm working with a group right now that has their focus on, on creating some financial revenue, right? I'm like, what's the number? They give me the number. I say, good, now multiply it times 10. And they're like, why? Just do what I tell you to do, man. You hired me. Okay. Multiply times 10. They do good. Now we're going to create a a strategy for 10 X, not for the original target. Oh my God, man. They're like, what do you, we, we, we thought the first target was big. Good. Now how you feel about it? 
because we're going for 10 times that. We're going to create a strategy based on 10 times the problems that you thought you had. And we're going to come up with a solution that's going to get us way above the one you thought you had. If we come up, with sh- we come up short on both of them, we're still better off. So the 10x rule basically is a 17 chapters. If this book doesn't, if this book and or audio program doesn't wake you up, I mean, personally, I would get the MP3. Just because it's about double the information as the book and I read it, just like I'm delivering it to you right now, I read out of the book. And then I start kind of like branching off into examples and situations. My staff couldn't believe it when we did the book because they're like, oh my God, that's like 13 to 14 hours of content on a book that should be maybe six hours. And just real quick, uh, you can pick up this book for free at kfmbook.com. If you go to that link, kfmbook.com, and sign up with Audible, uh, you, you just get a free credit, and you can apply that to any uh, audiobook of your choice. And since uh, the 10x rule is on audiobook, uh, on Audible, you can get that book for free if you go to kfmbook.com. All right, Grant, go ahead and uh, break it down for us. What else is the 10x rule? It's going to show you we're going to literally take every area of your life, spiritual, uh, physical, uh, financial, and say, hey, we want to blow all this up. The 10X rule is a, is a myth breaker about balance. I don't want balance. I don't want one or two areas of my life. I don't want to pull in and, and, and give up on my, my business to make my marriage work. The 10X rule says, no, 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 we're going for both of them. And then we're going to go for another category. And then we're going to go for another category. And then we, we, we want everything. The 10X rule is for greedy, insatiable appetites, for hungry uh, men and women that are never satisfied. So then how do you manage your time when you're you know, doing 10x more work? I don't. You don't manage time. You don't manage time. You multiply it. <laughs> All right. Well, you got you to explain. You got to break this down. So, so what I mean by I, I, I want to create time. I, I don't want to manage it. I don't want to have a schedule of time. I don't want to like, oh, I don't because everybody uses the time excuse. Okay. What I do is I create more time by making decisions about the things I want to do. So I'm going to end up with less free time or dead time, downtime, devil time, you know, white space on the calendar. I'm going to end up with less of that, but nobody likes that anyway. I mean, look, the people that are listening to your show, the, it, somewhere at the end of the vacation, they're ready to come home. They're like, I'm ready, dude. Okay. The days, the days and, and the weeks and months that, that you're most lit up is when you're full on purpose. You're full on purpose. And it's the end of the day. And you're like, I can't believe it's seven o'clock. I left here last night at seven o'clock. I'm like, man, I got seven o'clock. I didn't even know. What, I thought it was three o'clock in the afternoon. That's when a guy, that's when a guy or gal is most alive. That's when an organization is most lit up. You're not managing time. You're freaking packing it. You're pushing everything you can into that thing. And you don't know what's going to happen, but you're packing everything and it's fun and it's exciting. And then something happens. Somebody says, you're going to get burnt out doing that. You need to slow down. You need to take it easy. Okay. What are you doing? You know, this, this isn't going to make you happy. Do you want to, I don't need your freaking advice. I need to pack my life full. Most people are dying at 20 and making it official at 80. Most people, most people are living their life with nothing to brag or talk about. I'm not going to burn out. The people that are burning out are basically all purpose. The people that are on purpose don't burn. I'm not a firecracker. I'm a spiritual being, okay? Fully on purpose. If I'm fully on purpose, yeah, I'll bitch about, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I'm tired. But if I'm fully on purpose, I'll always have the energy. If I'm doing the things that are meant for me to do in line with what I should be doing in my life, and you can't always be doing what you want to do, but if it's in line with where I'm going, I should be excited. If I'm fully engaged with the company I'm working for, And by the way, that's about me, not about the company. It's not their job to get me fully engaged. If I'm fully engaged, I'm going to love my work. I'm going to see opportunities. My eyes are going to be wide open. I'm going to see possibilities and ways to grow and be valuable. And I will not burn out. Burnout is an indication that you are now clearly off your purpose. And so, Grant, let me ask you, do you have a system for creating goals? Obviously, when you do TEDx rule. I mean, you're, you're doing it based off your goals. So how are you setting up your goals? Yeah, that's a great question. I have this little planner right here. It's called the 10X planner. And it was because people, every time I mention the 10X rule, every interview I've ever done on that book, time comes up. 
So I created this planner and the left side, it's like any other planner you've ever seen. It basically breaks the day down into times. That's things I'm going to do. But the right side, and you're talking about goals now, okay? Uh, the right side has, I write my goals down in the morning and I write them again, down again at night, okay? So twice a day, every day, Saturday, Sundays included, I'm writing my goals down. During the day, I have targets, what targets I'm trying to meet and then what successes that I achieve. Now, typically, this isn't a good example, the one I'm holding right now because the pages are blank, but typically my pages are going to be completely full. I don't even care if I hit it all, okay? What I care about is what success came out of my day. What are my goals? What were my targets? What was my success so I can amp up again for tomorrow? Look, more often than not, I don't hit my targets. Most of my targets are never hit. M most of my goals will never be achieved, at least in this lifetime. I don't care. I want to be on fire every day, not for the money, not because I hit the target, because I want to be on fire every day. You know, I want to be excited about what I'm doing every day. I want to go home at night and say, when my head hits the pillow, or, you know, when I watch an hour of TV, I feel like, okay, you know what? I needed this hour of TV just to get something back because I gave so much today. And it's regardless of what job you're doing. Look, I've sold cars. I sold furniture. I've been on the road. I've flown 3 million miles around the United States. If I'm fully on purpose, completely engaged with my goals and my activities and the thing that drives me, connected to what gets me excited, that's why I write them down twice a day, then I'm going to find I'm, I'm better off. I'm right. If I write my goals down twice a day, that's 700 times a year. Okay. And, and let's say I'm competing against the Johnson brothers and they're writing their goals down, you know, once a month and we're both going into a deal. Well, there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to be more excited that day than they are, more focused than they are, because I'm writing them down. It's just numbers. It's how, how, how close can I stay? How closely connected can I stay to the things that I want? So the successful person is going to be doing his purpose, one. And two, he's going to be very clear on his goals, and he's going to be writing them down daily, twice daily, and he's going to repeat this every day. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't think most people have clear, clear set goals. I think most people are showing up to the job and doing the task, and I'm doing the task. Oh, and I got to do a task again. So like at my office this morning, everybody had their uh, 10X planner, and I said, hey, open up your planner. And it took, I don't know, 25 seconds, I don't know, two minutes, something like that. And I said, hey, write your goals down. And you can see people, you can see how difficult it is for people to do this. Now, I do that in the morning, I do it at night. Nobody does that. I'm just telling you, I know I've, I've, I've seen all these courses on goal setting. If you're not writing them down every day, you don't have a goal. You, you have a wish. You have some lost idea. This is like a movie that you saw years ago. Okay. I saw the matrix. Okay, good. I, I, but I know there's a pill involved and I think Keanu did that movie and, and there's two pills involved in fact. And I think there's a black guy, <laughs> right. That had all the power or something, but really, I don't really know the movie today. If I saw it again, it'd be a different thing. You know what I'm saying? It's my, my goals, man. What is more important than your goals? Not even my kids are more important to me than my goals. Now I know nobody, I know this is sacrilegious to say this, but, but nothing, my marriage is not more important than my goals. Nothing is more important to me than my personal goals in life. And when I'm connected to my personal goals in life, I become a better father and I become a better husband I become a better church member. I become a better community person. I become a better a boss because I'm lit up, excited, not lost and not wandering. And, and, and I'm certainly not going to be burnt out. Oh, um, man, I wasn't sure where you were going to go with that. But, you know, I think you recovered. Uh, you become a better person when you're on your purpose and you're moving towards you're moving forward towards your goals. I, I can see that. And I think that it will benefit the people around you when you are on purpose and you are hitting and just crushing your goals. You need to title this. You need to title this. Grant Cardone would rather his goals than his children. <laughs> yeah, we can throw in a picture of you just devouring two children. Eating two children. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Grant, what would you say is the difference between a six-figure earner and a seven-figure earner? Is it a difference in mindset? $900,000. $900, okay. <laughs> $72,000 a month. That's the difference. Both of them are broke. They're both broke. Guy under 100 is broke. He thinks he's got money. That's why he's broke. See, because he compares himself to the guy down the street. Man, I'm making 100. He's making 60. You're both broke. 
See, see, people that talk about money like this are uh, they, they don't understand money. Well, man, I'm gonna make a million dollars. I'm gonna make a million. You, you broke. You don't understand. You do not understand. Anybody that thinks a million dollars is a lot of money does not, never has had a million dollars, okay? And and because a million dollars is no money. If you got 40 years left to live and you have no more income coming in, a million dollars is no money. You can't live on it. You can't invest on it. And that's why people are getting crushed. Now, a better question would be, what is the difference between a guy making a hundred grand and a guy making... And I understand your, you, what you're saying, okay? And a guy making, you know, a, mil, uh, uh, a 10 million a year, okay? Because now all of a sudden you got this big gap. And this guy that's making 10 million, trust me, he's only thinking about how to make 12 or 15 or 20. That's all he thinks about all the time. How do I get to 20 now? So I think the difference is, is if there, if there is a gap, okay, this guy that's starting to make these big numbers, all of a sudden the big difference is he's not, he, he is now into possibilities, into futures. And the guy that's making a hundred is trying to manage something. And the guy that's hitting the big cheese is trying to get something rather than hold on to something. You know, one of the biggest mistakes, I don't know if you're going to ask me about mistakes, but, but maybe I'll get there right now. One of the biggest mistakes I made my whole life was I didn't spend enough money. I should have been spending and investing more money. I was brought up to middle class to understand you don't get rich managing money. You get rich, okay, connecting with opportunities that can produce and multiply money. You don't get rich saving money, which is a massive lie that has been perpetuated onto the middle class in this country and causes most business owners not to make it. Like they think employees employees cost money. Employees don't cost money, okay? Your payroll does not cost you money. Missing opportunities is what costs people money. And, and so I, the, the biggest mistake I've made is not going after huge, giant opportunities and going all in with my last dollars and pennies in order to get that. That's why the guys on Wall Street make so much money. These guys that are doing hedge funds and they're making freaking 25 million bucks and their think is just massive compared to the guy that's making 300 grand. So it is a mindset shift. It's a different way of conducting business. Oh, t- yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I know you said that. I, I agree that it is a mind shift. But, but something even bigger than just a shift in, in the mindset, you know? All right. And so, Grant, let's now dive into the knowledge round. Are you ready? All right. I'm ready. Hey, guys. One of the questions I've been getting a lot lately is, can you put together a list of the best books and success quotes from all of your guests and combine that into one guide? And so I've actually just done that. It's called the top 30 books and success quotes every man must live by. So out of all of the podcast episodes I've done, over 60, I finally put together this guide. And you can download it for free at kfmfree.com. Again, that's kfmfree.com. Welcome to the Knowledge Round, where the guests will be asked rapid-fire questions to give the audience invaluable pieces of wisdom to help transform their lives, starting in 3, 2, 1, showtime. All right, Grant. So I'm gonna, I consider you a master salesman, okay? I'll call you that. I'll, yeah. I'll give you the title of master salesman. And so what are some of the biggest lessons you've learned in sales in your career? You know, first of all, I would say the the first thing is you're the only person to blame in a sale. Nobody is. No, it's not the economy. It's not your manager. It's not the customer. Never, never, never is it the customer. Know that it's never the customer. Okay. Uh, number two, anybody can change your mind. Any customer, I've seen people change their mind. I've seen wealthy people say no, 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 and all of a sudden change their mind literally 30. In fact, the wealthier they are, the faster they can change their mind. Okay, they'll lock down and say, no, 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 get out of here. And all of a sudden just like flip on a dime and change their mind so fast and be like, okay, I'll do it now. And, and right now when I share that with you, I'm thinking about it, this individual that is extremely wealthy and I was helping this fundraising community, uh, this not-for-profit, uh, and we were trying to get this person to, to do a bunch of money, uh, over a million dollars. And uh, it was no, no, no. And I hate everybody. And he got all nasty. And I mean, me, man, I thought he was going to throw people through windows. He was so pissed off. And I looked at him. I said, you know, the only reason you're this upset, can I just say that you are upset? And the only reason you're this upset is, you know, you know, this is the right thing to do. And it was literally within 45 seconds, he agreed to do the entire amount and some more. So first of all, I would say it's always me. Number two, 
People can change their mind in a second, which means you need to keep asking. And the third thing is you, you always need to be looking for the opportunity. You know, the best salespeople I know are just always looking for opportunities and keeping their pipeline full, telling people about what they do. It's, re it's really more about a, a uh, networking thing than it is the great salesman. All right. And so earlier we talked about being on your purpose and how this is what's going to allow you to work 10 times harder and be more successful in life. So what kind of advice would you have for someone who hasn't found their thing? They're kind of lost or unsure of what their purpose is in life. I think I would, you know, I think back when I was 23 years old and I was like, my life was so, so I, I think about three different areas of my life. I was 23. I was 35. I was 51. And when I'm 23, I'm broke. I'm broke spiritually, emotionally, in every way possible. Physically, I'm broke. Uh, and financially, I'm broke. Well, that, that was a different thing. How do I turn myself around? I mean, there was a tr tremendous impetus. Yeah, is impetus a word? I don't think it is. Uh, there was a tremendous uh, impetus. Impetus. I just didn't want to get, I didn't want to get too close to impotent. <laughs> There was a tremendous uh, 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 push to not be broke every day, okay? Because the reality is it, it takes a lot of energy to be broke. And I always tell people, look, if you've ever been broke, you can be rich. Because it takes a lot of creativity to be broke. You're having to figure it out all the time, right? So there was that where I just, okay, I got to respect myself. I have to have money. Then then when I'm 35 years old, I, may, I, I had, I don't know, probably a couple million dollars made. And then I started like, oh my God, man, I'm good. You know, well, it's a different problem. And it is a problem, trust me, because it's not enough money. And I'm 35 years old. I got too many years left to live on this. And I got to, I either got to do what I don't want to do every day just to create a little bit of money, which would be like, seems like broke to me. You know what I mean? Spiritually broke. Like I'm got to go, go do this every day just for paper just for digits in a bank. And then when I was 51 years old, the Lehman collapse happened, okay? And I watched 30 years of wealth just go out, like literally lots of wealth, okay? Tremendous amounts of wealth that, that I didn't think could be destroyed. And I watched it like go the wrong direction. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna end up being one of those people that made it and got, got busted. And it's because I had lost my hustle so when I tell people about getting your purpose on, look, I'm 56 years old. You better find it, okay? Or you're going to freaking die every night, every day. You're going to die. And it doesn't, it, money cannot solve this problem, okay? Whether you have a million dollars, $10 million, or a hundred million, you need a reason to get up every morning. Where am I going? What am I doing so that you can feel like you're alive? And I would just tell people, write your goals down. Write your goals down every day, man. Write your goals down. Don't, it doesn't matter where you are. What matters, where do you want to go? And then number two, I would say, get around some people that, that talk like me, that, that don't pat you on the back. They don't tell you how good you're doing. They don't give you a freaking ribbon or a bow. Dude, get around some people that will push you to be great, that will push you and keep pushing you. And that means probably not your family and probably not the friends you have now. It probably means some people that will actually tell you the truth. You're living below your potential. You can do a lot more. Knock off the baby, you know, acting like a baby and, and, and quit talking about what you did. And let's start talking about really doing something big. All right. Well said. And Grant, what was holding you back from becoming the man you are now today? I think the thing that held me back. OK, but there's again, there's been all these places. All right. One was the way I was brought up. I mean, uh, no doubt about it. I, I was brought up in a space that had the wrong knowledge. I mean, your show's called Knowledge for Men. You know, the old thing about knowledge is power. Yeah, it is. And you can get wrong knowledge. There's so much wrong data in the marketplace. I would say to you, it's harder to find real data, truth, da true data today than it is to find just a bunch of garbage. And uh, the thing that was holding me back was a family. They, didn't, they weren't physically holding me back and they were rooting for me. OK, it was just they were rooting for me to win a game that was a limited playing field to what I was supposed to do in my potential. And then I, then I got around, then the community, if it wasn't my parents, if it wasn't my parents and my brothers and sisters, it was my friends, the education system. It was all this garbage that is dumped on people that you got to get a job. You got to be this, you got to act like that. All these social skills that we're taught. So I just think those were the things that were holding me back. I, I needed to get 
free thinking. I needed to get my own knowledge, like what is true for me, not what is true for you or somebody else. Very good. And Grant, can you name someone who's been a mentor in your life? What did he or she tell you that really had an impact on you? Uh, well, let me see. There's been so many. I mean, there's been some that have been like the, it was the bad lessons. It was like I was watching guys. I've, I've watched a couple of guys in my space, you know, authors and, and business owners that, oh, I don't want to do that. So, so, you know, the mentor thing can work kind of, you can look for mentors of what not to do which I would tell people to do that. Uh, who's been specific mentors of mine? I mean, my dad very, very much influenced me without ever knowing he did. My mother, an unbelievable influence about never quit. My twin brother, dude, my twin brother. I remember my twin brother telling me when I was 25 years old, hey, don't call me anymore. Get to work. And I was like, what? He's like, don't call me anymore. You're, you're putting off freaking facing the demons in the marketplace. Go out and freaking make a success of yourself and don't call me until you do. I was like, damn, that shit's cruel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Super cool. But, you know, slapped you in the face and sometimes that's what we need. So you're an author, Grant, and you've read countless books since, you know, 23 when you first started the uh, the journey. Uh, what are your three most influential books and why? Single most influential book was a book called Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard. Changed my life more than any single book that I've ever read. I've read that book seven times. Some people are like, I can't get through it. Read it again. You hit a word you didn't understand. It's about the mind. It's about control and it's about your potential. Uh, second book that probably influenced me greatly was uh, Greatest Salesman in the World by Alec Mandino. Freaking love that book. But could probably I might go read it again tonight. That's an easy book to read. Third most influential book is probably, uh, I, lo I loved uh, Crush It by uh, Gary V. Even though that little bitch won't call me right now. I got to call him for me. He ain't call me back. Yeah, he's a tough cookie to catch. I mean, like I said earlier, he, you know, he no-showed me a few times. Dude, that ain't right, man. Come on. <laughs> All right, seriously. And what two or three skills do you need in order to succeed in your field? Well, I think in any any field, the the two or three life skills that you got to have is you got to you got to be you got to be persist no matter what. You can just go listen to pick 10 billionaires and I guarantee you all 10 will say something about persistence. Um you got to think big. There's no reason to think small, okay? The thinking small thing is so it's so hard. It's so much it takes so much energy to think small. You're, you're literally like trying to drive a car with a brake on. That's what you're doing when you're thinking small. Look, think big and get around some people that think big and want to think big. And the third thing is, you know, a life lesson. You got to let go of some people. You got you got to find somebody's head to put on a, sp a, a pike every once in a while and say, adios. You got to go. This ain't my game I'm playing anymore, bro. I got to go play on a different field. You, you got to be willing to let go of something. And that is many times as people... You got be, be willing to let go of everything, your home, you know, your location, the, the clothes you wear, be willing to get rid of your name. I mean, be willing to get rid of everything. Burn the ship's commitment, mommy, daddy, brother, sister, best friend, uh, the neighborhood you grew up in, the zip code you have, let it all go to go create what you want. Okay. And then you're going to be a better, you're going to be better for everybody. I like that, man. Got a scenario here for you, Grant. Imagine you had 60 seconds with your 20 year old self. What would you tell yourself to do and what would you tell yourself not to do? Okay, dude, you got to quit using cocaine every day, okay? You're smoking too much weed, you're popping too many pills, you got to knock it off, okay? Because I had a $500 a day cocaine, cocaine habit when I was uh, 20 years old. And then I'd been, I'd been like, hey, I'm walking away until you get your shit together. So that's what I would have told him. I would tell him not quit using all drugs, okay? Even the weed that they're, they're, they're legalizing everywhere. The sticky... The sticky is slowing you down. And then I would tell him also, hey, man, you got to think big, giant, huge, okay? Uh, if you take every penny you have and invest it in getting a massive think, that's what I would tell that kid. I, I would be like, man, you could do anything you want to, but, but you have to be willing to throw in everything you have. And I see most people, they're trying to protect what they have rather than go get what they want. All right. And the million dollar question is this. It better be, it's got to be more than a million dollar question though, bro, because I don't. Okay. $10 million question is At least. this. Would he even listen to you? <laughs> he would, uh, yeah, he'd probably, he'd probably be like, get out of my face. He'd be like, hey, 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 G, big G, you're in my face. You're in my face, get out of my face. And he'd be like, <laughs> okay. 
Because you know what? Dude, the truth is he wasn't ready yet. You know, it, it was going to be another couple of years before he finally cleaned up. I mean, is, there was no fixing him. There was nothing my parents, my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, my, my boss at the time. Nobody could have kept me from doing what I was doing at that time because I, I just couldn't be talked to. So at that moment, you know, the only thing that helped me was people walking away. People actually had to leave my life and say, adios, dude. Call us when you get your shit together. And if you can't, no problem. It's your life. And, and, I, and I think that, that people need to understand, look, you got to walk away. You got to be willing to walk away from people and let them grow up or not. Like one of the things we do in my company that's been very successful for me is when things aren't going well, I'm looking for who's hanging the show up. Who's hanging my freaking show up? Who's causing problems around here? I mean, it's not going to be obvious. Otherwise, we'd have already gotten rid of them. But something's not going right. Why not? Because there might be somebody in your life or in your company or on your team or division or department that's just got enough counter intention, a counter pushback, a, a, a counter consideration to what everybody wants to do. And it's causing the whole thing to hang up. It's like a car that's stuck. Sometimes I just got to remove what's keeping the car from rolling. I don't need to fix the engine. Yeah, I like that. And just real quick, how is it possible to have a $500 cocaine habit? Isn't that just too much in a day? You still thinking about that 500? I had a had a I had a pound of weed in my closet all the time. How do you keep a pound of weed? You you don't buy it by the bag, dude. You go buy a pound. Okay? I'm an investor, dog. I'm a I'm a freaking entrepreneur, man. I don't make little, you know, let's go get committed. I was in a treatment center at 25 years old. The guy next to me, his name was Ben. I said, "Ben, how old are you, bro?" He's like, "I'm like 57." I said, "Bro, what took you so long to get here? I'm 25, man." I said, you, 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 you're drinking a bottle a day. You need to commit. You got to go all in. You got to 10X your addiction, dog. <laughs> See, because the truth, the, and, and there's a lot of truth in that, okay? I don't have any shame about that past because it is what it is, okay? Look, you need to, whatever you're doing in life, okay, commit all the way. All the way, all in, all the way, burn the ships. I don't care what it is. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Commit all the way. And if it's the wrong thing, by committing all the way, you're just going to find out sooner. See, most people are just marginal. They just play at everything. They're just half ass in everything, even their freaking addictions and problems and their sinful ways. Look, commit all the way. Get it out of your freaking system if that's what your problem is. And either, either die or live with it book yourself so you can start doing something that contributes to your life, other people's lives, uh, lives and, 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 and your community. So you're doing something positive because you can only do something destructive at 10X levels for very short periods of time. And as we're coming to a close here in the knowledge round, uh, Grant, do you have any last parting piece of guidance that you want to leave with the audience? Dude, if people don't know you for your work ethic, you ain't working. If people don't know you, if people are not commenting about either your work ethic, man, you sure work a lot. If they don't comment about, I hear about you everywhere I go. If they're not talking about, man, you got a good attitude. Every time I see you, you're smiling. If they're not talking about you in those ways, it tells me everything about you. All right. Well said. And Grant, that's going to conclude the knowledge round. So what's exciting you today? What's getting you out of bed in the morning, Grant? My goals get, get me out of bed, you know, where I'm going, get me out of bed. I want, I'm trying to build a digital network work right now. I want to basically build a digital network, like a, a, a place where people can come. Entrepreneurs can watch, who knows, maybe me and you will do something where we get 10 million visits a month. That's the target. 10 million visits a month. We'll sell the company for five or 600 million, maybe a billion dollars. Uh, I want to build a billion dollar real estate portfolio. Uh, I got to get me a private plane. It's time now. I need, uh, I need, I want all my material translated. I want 10 million books sold. I'm about to go do a tour with Steve Harvey. I got a, a TV show dropping. We're doing four radio shows a week, 16 a month. I'm excited. I can't wait to meet you too, man. How much weed you smoke, by the way? <laughs> I don't smoke, man. Come on, man. When I brought that up, I could tell you got a little fidgety. <laughs> no, I don't smoke weed many, many years ago. Okay. All right. All right. That's good. <laughs> All right, Grant. And so how can my audience connect with you moving forward? If you Google my, if you Google my name, then, you, then you'll have every, every option available to you. Google Grant Cardone and then you'll have, where do you want to go? You want to go to LinkedIn? You want to go to Google? You want to go to Twitter? You want to go to Facebook? Uh, you want to go to YouTube? YouTube's got 1,100 videos on it. If you have a hard time finding me, I would suggest you put a bullet in your head. <laughs> All right. Just not meant to be. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
All right, Grant Cardone, thank you so much for being on my show and sharing your life story and lessons with my community. I appreciate and value your time. Dude, why am I seeing you this late in the show, bro? I get to get, take a shot at you. Got a good head of hair, man. You good looking guy. Are you in a robe? Are you a robe? <laughs> no, this is a, this is a blue oh, button up. Dude, what what do you, you mean a robe? I thought you. Were... I, I usually wear a tank top, man. I put on the special, the good stuff for you. Okay, I thought you had like that. Looked like a. I thought he was the robe guy, the robe playboy guy. What's his name? Hugh Hefner. Dude, you had that young Hugh Hefner look, man, coming out all studly. Dude, it's awesome. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on. I, I love the name of your show, man. I hope this helps. I hope uh, I hope your audience likes the show. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm cutting here. We're just, we'll just we talk afterwards. Uh, this is going to wrap up the episode with Grant Cardone. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. All right. So where are you located, Grant? We're, we're in Miami Beach, man, if you ever want to come party. <laughs> so the other thing is, you know, I would love, uh, Lisa, if we could get like maybe an offer for his group or, or is your group mostly entrepreneurs? I wouldn't say they're mostly entrepreneurs, but there are some entrepreneurs. So what do you got? Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't, you know, what I, you, this is what I want to do for your audience. Anybody that kind of gels with my message, I want to put together a package called the entrepreneur package. I don't think most of your, your audience are uh, listen to CDs or read books. The entrepreneur package is basically every one of my books on audio download, MP3 download. And I'll send them the books for free. Okay. These are not, these are not iTunes audio downloads. These are sick freaking programs that are worth millions of dollars. Okay. And I'll do them for, I don't know, let's do them for 295. Okay. I think they're, they're on my website for 1200 bucks. So I'll do the books, the downloads and the CDs, whatever they want for 295. All right. Well, I'm still airing this. So what's the website that everyone should go to? Go to Lisa, what, let's build a website right now. GrantCardone.com forward slash. Make it KFM. KFM, bitch. KFM. So go to GrantCardone.com forward slash KFM. And tweet me. Tweet me. Here's the other thing. You guys tweet me. I'll get you some Twitter followers. I got, I don't know. I got a bunch of Twitter followers. 280,000 Twitter followers. If you tweet at Grant Cardone and say GMB. And EMD, hashtag GMB, hashtag EMD. Okay, I'll freaking retweet you. I tell you, GMB means get mine, bitch. <laughs> and EMD, you figure it out. Keep that in, all right? Oh, man. Yeah, it's all in. Okay. Uh, we recorded the whole thing there. So, uh, Grant, until next time, thank you for your time. You're the man, brother. Thank you. All right, I hope you guys liked the episode here with Grant Cardone. I know I certainly did. And I have a small request here for you guys, the listeners. If you can think of any guest that would be a good fit for the show, simply shoot me an email at andrew at knowledgeformen.com and just put the you know the potential guest website link and then a short sentence of why this person would be a good fit for the show and I'll take a look at it. I've actually responded to a number of guest requests and I've actually gotten guests on the show simply because a listener thought this person would be a good fit for the show. So shoot me an email, andrew at knowledgeformen.com and I'd be happy to take a look and you can send more than one request, as many as you'd like, and I'll take a look at all of them. All right, guys, until next time. Thank you for listening to the Knowledge for Men podcast show. It's been a pleasure having you be a part of a thriving community of men who want to crush it in all aspects of life. I'm on a mission here to inspire millions of guys. And with your help, we're going to make a dent in the universe. Check out knowledgeformen.com for a ton of free content that's designed to help you live a remarkable life. Again, that's knowledgeformen.com. I hope to see you there. And always remember, 2014 is the official year of the crush, where we take action to get the life we've always dreamed of. This is your host, Andrew Farabee, and until next time, let's do it.